In the past few weeks, Australians have been mourning the deaths of another four members of our armed services who've died in Afghanistan. But as the military toll rises, a local academic has been preparing a report on civilian deaths in conflict. Susan Bro has found that states like Australia have a legal obligation to record civilian deaths. She's now in Geneva about to present her findings to the UN and I caught up with her at Flinders University before she left. Susan Bro, welcome to 730 South Australia. Thank you. Why does what you found matter? It matters because there is such an issue these days with civilian casualties of armed conflict. And there's such a debate about how, how many lives are being lost during wars. And yet we don't really have the answer to that. What have you found in terms of a state's responsibility? I've found that there are a number of responsibilities on any state that engages in armed conflict. And part of the responsibility is actually to search for casualties, which can be to the point where if there's been an explosion to search for remains to identify the casualty who is that person is it a civilian is it someone who was a terrorist or a militant someone involved in armed conflict and this is a legally binding legally responsibility. binding responsibility and the next responsibility is actually to notify their family and that's one of the most important parts of the responsibility is the right of a family to know the fate of its relative and that's a human right an international human right when you say that the states have a responsibility and these are states who are engaged in conflict, yes. to record, to uh, repatriate where necessary, to respect yes. civilian casualties. What part of the state do you mean? That's a very good question. It could be either of any of those possibilities. It could be the Department of Defense establishing a separate agency, uh, a, a sub-department of a Department of Defense. It could be funding a non-governmental organization because in fact right, right now there are a number of non-governmental organizations that are actually recording civilian casualties and so they could receive state funding. My, uh, my argument though is that it is the state that's primarily responsible. It's the state also would have a very uh, strong self-interest in not finding and not recording because those things could be used in respect of any state um, to beat it over the head in a number of international fora to be used by their enemies. I argue exactly the reverse, that in fact when you don't account for civilian casualties, and this is what happened in the Iraq conflict very much so to the parties that were involved, civilian casualties can be exaggerated, um, statistics can be done by one death could suddenly become ten deaths. If you don't have an accurate record, the state can actually be accused of killing many more people than actually die in the armed conflict. What states are likely to conform to this? And, and let's make an assumption here. Uh, I'm assuming it'll be states like Australia and, and Canada, where you're uh, from originally, from the UK, the EU, maybe the United States. If those states do it, the Western states, to return to that other point, surely it gives uh, those who are opposed to us a chance to beat us over the head. It is an argument that could be made. I mean, it's not only states. I actually argue that groups such as the Taliban should be doing the same thing, that they have an international responsibility to uh, account for their civilian casualties. And, of course, the argument is, well, they're not going to do it. And some rogue states, let's say Muammar Gaddafi's Libya, will not do it. Syria will not do it. But do we really want to be in the same club as countries like that? I mean, the point is that we want to be respectful of international law, and by and large, we are. Well, indeed, but that's another point. Australia is respectful of international Absolutely. law, by and large, and it's a signature to a number of international treaties. But my understanding is, is that we haven't actually gone that extra step and imported those into our domestic law. So when we talk about um, having the wherewithal, the legal wherewithal, to um, hold our military to account, we can't do it because we haven't done that extra step? Well, it, uh, many of them have been, and Australia has enacted a number of uh, pieces of legislation. But this specific obligation, I will agree with you, it's not been specifically put into Australian domestic law. There's a very important argument there. The argument is that we're all bound by what is called customary international law. And that is rules that do not have to be necessarily incorporated into legislation. But as a good member of the international community, the state should be doing it because they conform with international law. And that's my field of specialty. I argue that states have an obligation that supersedes the domestic arena. 
Are you going to be applauded for this work, do you think? Well, I think I'll be criticized by some parties um, that this is going too far. Um, some states may argue that it's going to impose an undue burden when they're trying to um, fight a war and then they have to worry about civilian casualties on the top of that. But I think that a state that, that is sensible and realizes that it's in their interest to, to account for the civilian casualties because they're trying to spare civilian casualties. So by doing this, they're showing the international community that they respect their legal obligations. Susan Brough, a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for joining us on 730 South Australia. Thank you.